Hi guys, welcome back to my channel and today we have the topic that I've been meaning to film but I didn't know how to word it because I'm gonna talk about the handbags that are just not worth the price anymore and honestly I own so many of these bags and I will probably still buy some of these bags so take this video with a grain of salt it's just so we can chat about how we feel about certain price increases quality of certain brands I just feel like it's fun to talk about these topics this is why I made my YouTube channel so grab your coffee, grab your drink and let's chat about this. If you're new to my channel, welcome. My name is Lou and I make videos about handbag shoes and traveling, but mainly handbags. So if you like any of those topics, please consider subscribing to my channel and click the notification bell down below so don't miss any of my videos. Okay, thing is, I have eight bags on this list and one that I want to talk about is quite controversial, so I want you guys to hear me out. The first bag that I want to talk about is, I would say, the most important one. It's a classic flop. Not everyone, but almost everyone can agree, but the price is just not worth it anymore. And I'm saying this based my predominant bag in my collection. I love classic flaps. It's the first bag that I always recommend to anyone. I just feel like it's great. I love every aspect of it, but I do feel like we need to talk about quality, price increases, and many factors that make me consider that it's just not worth it anymore. I just, I can't remember when I was starting to buy handbags and when I wanted my first classic flap, and it was like $4,000. My first classic flap was already super pricey, and it was $4,000. And right now, this bag retails for $8,800 before tax. So for all of these bags, it's gonna be the prices before tax. So just add a couple hundred dollars and then you have the final price. So this bag retails for around $9,000 in the US. But in other countries, it retails for way more than that. And my problem here is, one, every time that I've tried to buy a new bag from store, they're always crooked, already with a little bit of wear and tear in terms of dents, stains, scratches, most of all crooked, like many, many bags are crooked especially classic flops. The price is actually higher than buying a brand new Birkin 25 from store. I know that buying Ethan's bags is just another topic, but considering that you can actually go and buy a Birkin, you just cannot compare the quality of that bag to the quality of a classic flop, especially the new ones. They don't even have the gold plating. They keep increasing their prices so, so much, and they don't have the gold plating anymore. They don't plan to bring it back that I know of. The quality is not going up. The customer service is actually going down and I know that many of you guys are gonna tell me that yeah they can do it because we're gonna still buy it and yes you're right I'll probably still buy a classic flop another one maybe I want a yellow one I understand that many of us do have love for the brand me included in here so I'm not gonna come here and tell you I'm never gonna buy another classic flop I'm never gonna buy Chanel anymore I love the brand I appreciate their designs I just really really like it but that still doesn't mean that I don't see the fact that it's just not worth it anymore and and if we still want to keep doing it, everyone to each their own. But I just want to talk my two cents here. They kind of have the quota system now for classic flops. My essay keeps telling me, oh my god, I just received a black classic flop. Do you want it? It's so special when it used to be so easy to obtain in terms of availability at the store. Like they had so many black classic flops available and now they're making them so hard to find. Just hiking up the prices, which is crazy. The lambskin is not even the same. The cover it's not the same, they don't have the gold plating, customer service is way way down and the bag is double, more than double the price of my first classic flap so that for me is crazy and it's not that I bought my first classic flap 10 years ago, I bought it like 5, 6 years ago, double the price in 5 years almost, like that's so crazy and there's no changes in anything other than the price, like even the quality has gone down so I used to have this idea that I wanted to have the classic flap in every single color available and right now I honestly don't feel that way anymore I'm just like do I really want it I don't want to save for them anymore it's just like okay they release a super cute special color that I really want I may do it but I consider so many other bags before the classic flop now and it used to be my priority to just have the classic flaps in every single color that I really liked and I know that that sounds crazy please I know that but it definitely just changed my mindset on the bag a little bit if I have that money 
and I was offered a Birkin, a Kelly or a Constance, I would go for that because the quality is just way over Chanel. So that's my two cents, but I would love to know your input. Of course, we can talk about the fact that it has the best resale value. You're not gonna lose your money on the bags, but I don't see them as investments, honestly, or cost per wear. I see them as what it is, a hobby. It's not a necessity. You never need a classic flap. You never need a luxury bag. So for the sake of the topic of the video, I don't feel like they're worth it anymore. And if you were to have that money, I would save it towards another bag or brand like Hermes or even Dior. Number two is gonna be Louis Vuitton and it's gonna be the Neverfull and the Speedy. And I also own it. So I'm just basically bashing on my own self because I own most of these bags. But when I got this bag, it was around 2017. And I've also owned three Neverfulls in every single print. I've sold those Neverfulls, but I decided to keep the Speedy because for me, it's a very special piece in my collection that I love, that I still use. But when I got this bag, like the Neverfull was 900 euros and the Speedy was like a little bit over the Neverfull. Right now the Neverfull retails for $2,000 for a canvas bag. $2,000 for a canvas bag. And the Speedy retails for $1,820 again for a canvas bag. And I'm gonna tell you again about the hardware. Like the hardware on my Speedy has been wearing so so bad. I cannot stress enough how disappointed I am because they have told me that they cannot fix it for me and if I want them to fix it I have to pay. They even told me that it's gonna happen again. The hardware is gonna tarnish no matter what you do and that's so weird to me because it's the only bag that I have with tarnished hardware in my collection. I have the Keeple and it's perfect. I have the Palm Springs Mini and it's perfect. It's just the specific Speedy which for me it means that they're not using the best quality hardware on their classic bags which are the Speedy and the Neverfull so it's messed up. Honestly it's messed up. They are double the price. The resale value is not even the best for them. I just don't feel like they're worth it anymore. There's so many other options out there. I would go instead of the Louis Vuitton Neverfull, the YSL Shopping Tote. It's leather and it's just more, it, it gives you better bang for your buck. However, if you still want to go for the Speedy, go for the leather version. In my opinion, I just feel like it's better quality. The price difference is not that high, but yeah, it's crazy to think that it's double the price. I don't know if I would buy them right now with the prices that they have. I definitely prefer my Palm Springs Mini in that sense. I just feel like it's a little bit better made. The Keep All is also very, very well made. It's such a sturdy bag. So I do see the value on these bags. I just don't feel like they're worth $2,000. The Dior Book Tote. I love and adore this bag. I still, like for me, it's worth it. But I do understand the fact that it's actually not worth the price. This bag retails for $3,350 before tax and it's not leather. It doesn't have a single piece of leather other than the tab that it has on the inside and that's pretty much it. However, for this bag, I am going to tell you that it does offer uniqueness, which is unique of the prints it's a beautiful piece it's a stunning piece I love the toilet de joie print it's so beautiful and I use this bag a lot but it was not three thousand dollars like it was way below that when I got it and to think that that's the price right now honestly it's crazy I would much rather right now spend those three thousand dollars towards another bag it's probably not this one but it's done I adore the bag I'm gonna keep using it I would never sell it but it's not worth it honestly if you're watching this and you were considering getting the bag use those three thousand dollars on something else and not on a non-leather handbag also the warranty it's quite fast on this bag i bought it pre-loved so it already came with its issues and when i got it i promised myself that i was not gonna be bathing the bag that much that i was gonna use it that i was definitely gonna use it and i can see right now that it has warranty it breaks my heart but it is what it is it's not a leather handbag things are not wipeable so it is what it is the next bag is going to be the dior saddle bag i was crazy about this bag i wanted it so so much. The reason why I just feel like it's just not worth the price. First of all, the shape of the bag is very non-functional, so it doesn't fit a lot. The more that I talked about wanting that bag, the more comments I got of many people telling me it's just not worth the price. It's so hard to get in and out. It fits almost nothing. And the bag, for me, it was not worth it without the strap. So you wanted to add the strap and it was $2,000 more. So the bag is already $3,800 before tax. Add the almost $2,000 strap and there you have almost a Lady Dior. At that time, it was almost a classic flap. Not anymore. It's such an expensive bag and I don't really feel like it is going to be a classic. That's one of the reasons why I stayed away from it. As much as I loved it and it was everywhere, you could look anywhere online and you would see an amazing outfit picture of someone wearing a Dior saddlebag. And for me, it was beautiful. I definitely wanted one. Now that I look back on it, I'm quite grateful that I didn't go through with it and I waited it out because honestly, I just don't feel like the price is worth 
worth it anymore. There is so much more that you could use that money for. Other bags that have better value in case you want to sell it. Because yes, it's not really that important right now to have like the best resale value. Because you're not getting into buying these bags thinking about selling them. You're buying them because you like them. But if the trend is not going to last that long and you end up wanting to sell that bag, you're going to lose a lot of money on it. And honestly, it's just not worth it. The next one is going to be the Bottega Veneta cassette bag. The one with the chain. That bag is now like $5,000 and Bottega Veneta has had so many price increases. I was someone who actually didn't really like Bottega Veneta. Now I kind of do. I love the Jody bag and I would buy the Jody bag but the cassette bag, the one with the chain, I've tried that bag on a couple of times. I've seen it a couple of times. It's so heavy, so expensive and so not functional. Like the chain is just so thick and so heavy that it feels like you're carrying this really big bulky thing. The chain is so long besides again super heavy i don't even know what to do with it i just feel like it's not even like a comfortable bag it doesn't have a good resale value yes maybe you have amazing quality with the bag but five thousand dollars for that it's just you can go for something else and i know that the weight of the bag is so important for so many people out there so i do want to mention the fact that it's a crazy heavy bag for what it is and i just don't feel like it's worth it if you want to spend your money on Botero veneta i would definitely advise you to go for the jody bag okay so i found out about this quite recently but turns out that the YSL Toy Lulu now retails for around $2,000 after tax but before tax is $1,850 and for me that's crazy because I used to say that this was an amazing starter bag I mean still is it's an amazing bag I love the bag so much but when I got it it was definitely not that price I remember that it was like retailing around $1,200 but YSL has sales from time to time and I got mine on a sale and because it was velvet it was like $600 almost $700 that was crazy because that was not really that long ago. So I don't know when YSL had this price increases, but it's just not that worth it anymore because it's almost $2,000. I mean, still, it's a great starter bag. It's an amazing handbag. The quality that YSL has is really, really good. I do feel like YSL should have more attention than what it has. But honestly, I just cannot even wrap my head around the fact that it had such a price hike in such a short amount of time. Taking into account that the brand does and retain its value and that is why I sell like it's not Louis Vuitton, Hermes or Chanel so that's nuts I cannot understand that number seven is gonna be the Louis Vuitton on the go and I'm gonna explain a little bit why first of all that I don't feel like the bag is worth it I don't like the big logo on it it's canvas what's crazy here it's that the canvas version retails for $3,100 but if you decide to go for the leather version that's like $400 more like if you want the on the go please go for the leather version because it's just way better quality you get leather you don't get canvas which for me makes the world of difference in terms of how it's gonna work on the long run despite the fact that i don't really like the on the go but that's my personal taste i just want to put out there the idea that if you're gonna buy a bag and it's canvas or whatever material it is check if they have a leather version and see the price difference between them because for example dior with a 30 montane the price difference between the canvas version and the leather version was almost none so i would heavily advise you to always check for the leather version and maybe consider getting that one i know that sometimes the canvas is more popular maybe you like it more maybe you think that it's more carefree but at the end of the day the leather version has a better value and it's gonna work a little bit better on the long run the lady dior and i want to talk about this one at last because honestly i'm super in love with the one that i have right now and what i'm gonna tell you here i hope that you take this away with you bags that don't retain the retail value such as dior even if the lady dior is like the most classic bag that the brand can offer don't buy it new from store the most popular size that the lady dior offers is a small one which is my abc and that bag retails for five thousand three hundred dollars she's quite hefty before tax of course this one retailed around four thousand i think and you can save over a thousand dollars just by going on the pre-love market so that's one of the reasons why i always think that before buying something new go and check how much it is on the resale market and maybe it's worth it for you to not go directly from the store and yes i know that you're missing out on the shopping experience but at the end of the day i do feel like saving thousands of dollars might be worth it for me the lady dior is worth the price if you buy it pre-loved i may buy the yellow one brand new from store because i just cannot find it pre-loved and i want it in the my abc but also consider the price with the sizes because the micro lady dior that bag has already quite a crazy price point and the difference in price between the micro and this one is not that much and definitely this one is way better because this one fits your phone fits everything and it's 
more of a bag and the other one is quite a trendy piece so do want to throw that in here but I would love to know what you guys think especially about the classic flap do you guys agree with me I would love to talk about it on the comment section down below if you guys enjoyed this video please consider giving it a thumbs up and if you're not to my channel please consider subscribing and click the notification bell down below so you don't miss any of my videos and if you're not done watching I'm gonna leave two videos right here in case you want to check them out thank you and see you on the next one bye